I'll get started and you'll introduce yourself and all that good stuff, all right? So hello, okay. hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the next installment of Sisters on Fire IRL series. Really excited to be speaking with Crystal. This has been a ongoing <laughs> session that we've needed to have, but she's going to introduce herself, tell us what she does, and then we'll get started from there. Absolutely. Um, I'm Crystal Bell Salisbury. Um, some of the things that I'm that I do, I'm a pageant consultant. I'm a blogger. I'm a writer. I'm a speaker. I kind of do a plethora of a lot of things, but my main mission in life is to empower women and girls for success mm -hmm. through my company, Crystal Clear Enterprises LLC. And through that mm -hmm. company, I empower women to create clear visions for their lives so they can experience success in what area what area of success that may be. Um, so mm -hmm. I do that through workshops. I do that through my blogs, through my books, and through vision board parties as well, just to show people, women, how to get a clear vision for their lives. Perfect. And how did you get started with this? How did you know this was your clear intention for yourself and the business that you wanted? Actually, it was a journey. Um, I really started when I got into the pageantry industry, which is kind of interesting how that happened. Um, I was started in that industry when I was 17 years old. And I started mm -hmm. um, because of my mother. She encouraged me to get involved in the industry, had honestly did not want to get involved in the industry, had no desire mm -hmm. to compete in pageants. Um, she tried to get me to do it early on, but I was like, no, that's not me. But then I eventually decided, oh, I'll check it out. It might be something to her wanting me to try this industry. And I fell in love with it. And one of the reasons why I did fall in love with the industry was because, you know, some people look at pageantry as the glitz and the glam and the crown, which it is that as well. But for me, it was yeah. a deeper meaning. I developed self-confidence because of it. Because growing up, I did not have self-confidence. I did suffer with low self-esteem. And pageantry mm -hmm. really helped build up my confidence and my self-esteem to really, so that I could become my best self. And that's kind mm -hmm. of what kind of started it for me. I didn't really go into that path of really trying to empower women and girls to success until I got much older, but pageantry really started for me because I was empowered through that industry and it progressed into other areas of my life. Love that. Okay. And what age did you start doing pageantry work? 17. Wow. Okay. And just for our audience, uh, you know, who'll tune in on the live or on the replay, what does it mean to like be a part of the pageantry uh, world and how long did you do that? How long were you there for? Okay. Well, to be a part of the pageantry world for me, because it's different for every girl, every woman, but for me, it was all about um, developing self-confidence, developing that self-esteem, and really becoming the woman, the girl, the woman that God had called me to be, and to really mm -hmm. be my best self. And one of the things I did learn, I really learned how to develop communication skills. I developed poise. I developed... Um, to really know how to network with people. And I also built a mm. lot of relationships in the industry. I'm actually still currently in the industry. I no longer compete, but I actually coach, I consult, and I actually serve on a staff for a national pageant. So I'm still very heavily wow. involved in the industry. And I also have a, a pageantry blog called crystalclearpageantry.com. So I'm well aware of what's going on in the industry. I write about it. I interview different title holders on my page. I talk about different mm -hmm. topics of interest to, to title holders or people who are still competing. So I'm very much involved in the industry today. Very cool. And that's uh, interesting to hear that because I don't necessarily know if that like that's a like deduction that most people would make like, oh, pageantry, pageantry and like increased self-confidence. That's so interesting. That, yeah. Like, what would you say? Was it like the training to perform? Was it, you know, the competition itself? Like what drove the, the increased self-confidence? One of the things about pageantry that really helps you is it helps you do the un uncomfortable and what I mean by that, a lot of people have um, stage fright. They don't like being in front of people or they don't like talking in front of people. Mm -hmm. But in pageantry, you have no choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're kind of out there in front of hundreds, thousands of people performing on stage, yeah. doing an interview, yeah. doing an, an interview in front of a panel of judges, doing an evening gown walk. So it really forces you to step out of your comfort zone and to be mm -hmm. confident in those things. And one thing that I, I like to say, even in the book that I wrote, Manifest the Crown, you have to do what makes you uncomfortable to really develop that self-confidence. And that's what really helped me. I had to do what was uncomfortable for me at one point, and that's what really helped me kind of move into that whole self-confidence space. Very cool. Okay. And then how did, now walk us through how you kind of transitioned all of those skills that you learned there into creating your own business and moving forward with that. 
Uh, one of the things I saw with a lot of, you know, girls, women, um, that something I suffered with myself was, you know, a lack of confidence, a lack of self-esteem. And I wanted to, you know, transform what I learned in the industry and not just, you know, focus on pageant girls, but just women in general, because I think, you know, our lack of confidence, our lack of self-esteem, what holds us back to really living out our true divine purpose. So yeah. some of the things that I learned in the industry about, you know, being confident and, you know, commanding an audience and, you know, just really uh, effectively communicating, you know, not only with a panel of judges, but in, in, front, in front of people, that really transformed me to really create an organization, create an agency to really help women and girls in that aspect. So, you know, if they're confident, if they believe in themselves, they can really accomplish great things in their lives. Because I think for me, mm -hmm. and I, I everybody probably agree with this, I think when it comes to success in my life, it really begins in the mind and what you believe yep. about yourself. And yep. if you don't believe in yourself, if you're not confident in yourself, you're probably not going to be as successful. So I think that's very Absolutely. important. Okay. And since you talk about kind of having this clear definition of success, how would you define success for yourself or just your career so far? And it's funny because I actually put a post about this earlier today because I used to have a warped view of success, how, you know, I looked at success as, you know, degrees and numbers and opportunities, which of course that does, that is a form of success. But honestly, success is really operating in your calling, in your purpose. That's what I truly mm -hmm. mean, success means. So whether you're a pageant mm -hmm. consultant, whether you're a dress designer, whether you're a speaker, yeah. a writer, if that is what you're called to do, then you're successful. Mm, so just really like walk, walk, in, walk into your purpose and walking in the divine calling, mm -hmm. your divine calling. Interesting. Okay. Now, how would you say your career so far has been affected being a woman and then being a person of color? Interesting. Huh. Honestly, my career, I've done several things in my life before I actually transitioned to entrepreneurship. Um, before that, I was in, um, I worked for an organization that worked with locally elected officials here in the state of Alabama. So, you know, being in that position and being a woman and being African-American, I was one of three African-American that, African-American women that worked at the position. So it was, it was hard because a lot of times people see yeah. you and I look so young and they see you think you're the intern or you don't know as much as you think you know and you're always yeah. having to kind of explain yourself. So I did have, yeah. I think that was an issue, you know, early on. But now that I'm entrepreneur, I haven't really experienced that as much. Um, mm. But I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure it's, it's coming. But, <laughs> but um, it's been, a, it's been a great journey. And um, okay. and one thing I can say uh, with any aspect of life, whether you're in a, you know, career, whether you're an entrepreneur, you, you do have to put your best foot forward. And sometimes you do have to let people know who you are and that you, you know, you you are who you are, and that no one can take that away from you. You know, regardless Absolutely. of your color, whether regardless of your 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 race, your sex, you know, you just have to be your true, authentic self. Absolutely. And would you say in pageant pageantry, like how would contestants uh, that are women of color, do you feel like they get the same break as other women, or in, in your experience and your exposure to that world? I would say when it comes to let me sit, let me think about this for a second. Mm -hmm. Out of the patterns that I've done in the past, it's very few women of color, and I will say that. And mm. I, one thing I will say is that when it comes to pageantry, because you, because most of the time your your judges are supposed to be diverse, that's not always the case. Um, sometimes you may have a panel of Caucasian judges, you may have uh, African American there, you may have males. Um, so one thing I tell girls that I coach, and even for myself, you just have to come on stage and bring it and be your authentic self. And show your confidence. Mm -hmm. Don't show that you're that you think you're less than because you may be one of two African Americans that's competing. You just come on stage and you bring it, and the judges will see who the real winner is. At the end of the day, you can spend thousands of dollars on your dress, your wardrobe, your hair, your makeup, your jewelry. But if you don't have that confidence, people can yeah. see right through that. Because I've been on the mm -hmm. other side before. I've judged before, so I I see authenticity and I see people who. Or faking it, <laughs> or, you know, or just faking it, you know. Absolutely, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. Now, mm -hmm. when it comes to your entrepreneurial journey, what would you say have been like key resources that have helped you? And you know, how important has like mentoring or networking been for getting your business up and running? I would say um, 
one one thing that has really been beneficial to me is really developing relationships with other entrepreneurs and especially entrepreneurs who are in like the beginning stages like I am because I'm fairly new. Um, I haven't mm -hmm. been, I've only been at this for about two or three years now. So just really okay. developing relationships with other entrepreneurs that are on the same level that I am and just supporting them in their endeavors as well. Because I think it's important. Um, a lot of times we as entrepreneurs, especially solo entrepreneurs, we try to feel, we sometimes think we're on an island out there alone by ourselves. But it's important yep. for to have community, um, to support others. And to learn from others. Um, I um, learn from yeah. a lot of my fellow entrepreneurs. You know, I've, I, I subscribe subscribe to their blogs and I follow their Facebook lives. And I just, I'm always learning from them because yeah. you never know everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. And, and I love that you said that because it's so important. I, I do talks on this as well. And it's like the power of knowledge is, is crazy. And you're, you're never going to know everything. You could be in business you know. for 70 years and there's always something new, a new platform, a new a resource, a new mm -hmm. outlet. So yeah, you always have to keep learning. And uh, I guess for, you know, just to kind of keep it 100, when it comes to challenges, what would you say have been some of the, the biggest challenges that you face so far as an entrepreneur? One of the biggest challenges I, fa I face um, as an entrepreneur is really, um, I will say this, being an entrepreneur is a faith journey. <laughs> mm. And it is it is a faith journey because I will be honest, I took a leap of faith and I actually quit my nine to five and became a, a full-time entrepreneur in 2017. So I've been at this for mm. a little over two years now, full-time, which I've always um, had an entrepreneurial mindset. I've always had little, um, I like I call side hustles before I quit my full-time job. So I've always had, a, I was always an entrepreneur at heart, but I never really took it to the next level. And so I decided to really take a leap of faith and really pursue yeah. what I was called to do. So just really mm -hmm. believing in myself and having the faith that this is going to work out. That's been kind of hard. This is really, <laughs> I'm like, when, you, when I took that jump, I literally took that jump. And some days I feel like I'm still in free fall that I haven't completely landed on my feet. <laughs> Yeah, but just absolutely. really wanting to, and there are days you just want to quit because you feel like it's not working and people are not reading your posts and you're not getting the brand sponsorships you want and you're not making the connections mm -hmm. that you want. And, you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's really tough. And absolutely. But what keeps me, absolutely. and what keeps me going is the fact that I was built for this. I was called to do this. And I, in order for me to really truly be successful, I have to walk this out and I have to really operate in my purpose and what I'm called to do. Mm -hmm. So just Absolutely. really keeping the faith has been the hardest part for me. And don't get me wrong, I yeah. have my moments. We all do. <laughs> but we, we have our moments and then we get back up and keep going. And it's interesting that you raise the point of, uh, so I, I'm assuming that you're of the, the, the stream of thought that as an entrepreneur, you really feel like you needed to be a full-time entrepreneur. You weren't uh, necessarily seeing how to negotiate your time to have a day job or have multiple streams of income outside of your entrepreneurial hustle. Or what, what, what are your thoughts? Why did you decide to do it that way? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had been in my full-time job for almost 10 years, and it came to a point in my life I was just very unhappy. And mm. not only was I unhappy, but I was it was affecting not only my mental health, but my physical health, and I was getting very sick. And I just okay. knew that this just wasn't life. You know, a job is not supposed to make you sick, and you're not supposed to be miserable every single day. And entrepreneurship yeah. was always at the back of my mind, but I was also always fearful of taking that step mm. because it's just the unknown. You don't know what's on yeah. the other side of entrepreneurship and of course you know you look at the monetary aspects of it you know can you sustain yourself but I just really had to you know I prayed about it and I sought wise counsel talked to some of my friends who are entrepreneurs who have taken leaps of faith like that that really kind of that really helped me to really further my decision and I just you know once I prayed about it and I came to you know I had to come to Jesus moment and I just made a decision that it was it was time yeah. and it, honestly it's unknown And so mm -hmm. I just made a decision. Um, let's see when did I make. I made the decision. In, I think the latter part of January 2017. I said March March 31st would be my last date. And mm -hmm. two weeks before that, I walked into my uh, boss's office, gave my two weeks notice, and that was it. And <laughs> I literally, I literally jumped out. And it hasn't always been the easiest journey, but it's it's been a good journey for me because it's taught me that you know I really needed to do this for me and to be my best self and to be happy you know mm -hmm. at the end of the day yeah you know of, of course you know making money is important you know taking care of yourself is important but you have to be yeah. truly happy at what you're doing whether Absolutely. it's a job or it's an entrepreneurship you know mm -hmm. endeavor and i will share this with you, you know 
for me, I'm one of those girls, I, I kind of go big or go home because I. <laughs> it's funny because this was not planned. I quit a job, became an entrepreneur, became an entrepreneur, got married six months later, and then moved to another city. Now, I wouldn't suggest anyone do all that. Ernie. <laughs> wow, that's intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was just, I think that it was just the season that it really needed to be done. And I'm grateful because a lot of things happened during that period. Of course, yeah. that six months prior to me getting married, I was able to publish a book. I was able to really grow my blog. I was really, I was able to gain clients in my, as a pageant coach. So some really good things mm -hmm. came out of it. Um, there were some moments that, you know, things got tight, but, you know, I made it and I'm still here two years later. So absolutely. And that's, you know, the beauty of entrepreneurship is everyone's journey is different, right? And I think, you know, I respect the honesty that you shared about the, the fact that like the day job, you know, maybe you could have negotiated to keep it, but if it was literally laboring on your, your mind, spirit, and health, then that is a clear indication from the universe, from spirit that like, nope time has come right and and i think that everyone yeah. has to have everyone has a different kick in the butt and and i think that you know i'm of the belief that you can you can make entrepreneurship whatever you want to make it right so i know Absolutely. people who do have a day job or have old, old multiple streams of income and their business like they figure mm -hmm. it out and i think that you know that that's the beauty of this journey that you have to everyone's journey is different you have to figure it out but it's good that you chose yourself and you chose your mm -hmm. health and you said enough is enough i think too many women Absolutely. are afraid to do that and whether it's whether we're talking about the conversation of entrepreneurship or not you have to choose you you have to choose yourself mm -hmm. in your life and it, it seems like that would be obvious but it's not and a lot of people suffer so good for you for choosing you and, and moving forward. Now, you did mention the book and the blog. So could you break down a little bit about the different types of writing that you do with the blog and then the book? I saw that you posted about that online. So talk all about that. Oh, absolutely. But I want to share one, one more thing. A lot of when it, going back to entrepreneurship, um, one of the things you have to learn, you have to learn about the timing and when, when the right time is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I did quit a job. But to be honest with you, before I quit that particular job, I actually applied for several other jobs and the door would close in my face every time. So sometimes mm. you have to understand, sometimes those closed doors mean it's time to go to the next level. So it wasn't like yeah. I just like, oh, I'm going to quit a job and be full time. I actually tried to yeah. continue to work, you know, in, in, in corporate America, but it just, yeah. it didn't work out for me for several years. Mm. You know, this was like a five year journey and it got to a point, the last job that I tried to apply for, I got to the last stage and they still did not pick me. And that was kind of a, a aha moment for me. It's like, God, yeah. I think you're calling me to do something else, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, sometimes yeah. you just have yeah. to understand. And one thing I want to stress to women, understanding the timing, you know, you know, there may, you know, you may have tried it one way and maybe time to try it a different way and just really get honest with who you are and just really get clear about yes. what you want and your goals. Um, and going back to the books, um, I've actually written a total of, let me think. Five books now. And my wow. books are Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about it. So what? my books are my very first my very first book is called Manifest the Crown. It's called A Crystal Clear Guide to Pageantry Success. That's actually my very first book. I published it in 2017. Mm -hmm. And nice. of course it has everything to do about pageantry. For those who are new to the industry, you want to learn more about the industry. It's kind of a, a guide to to pretty much who are novices to the industry to know more about the industry mm -hmm. and how to get involved in it. Then I wrote a book, uh, a book about affirmations. It's called Af Affirm the Queen, 50 Affirmations mm -hmm. that Empower Women and Girls for Success. I'm really big on affirmations. Like I said earlier, you know, dealing with low self-esteem, dealing with low self-confidence. Uh, one of the things yeah. I learned as an adult is that affirmations really help shift the atmosphere, really shift your mind to really truly believe to believe better about yourself because we we, we uh, think about so many negative things about ourselves oh, we're not pretty enough we're not thin enough we're not, we're not smart yep. enough and we have to change the conversation we have in our minds so one of the things that I started doing for my own self was I started um, reciting and writing affirmations in my journal and then I thought mm -hmm. you know why not, why yes. not share these with the world you know because I had created I you know cre I saw some online but then I created my own for myself so why not share, mm -hmm. why not share with the world so that's what I did for that one. And then my third book is called Kingdom Finances. It's 40 financial principles that um, empower you to properly manage money. I'm really big on personal finance. That's a, another thing that I do mm. too is to really empower women, not just women, but men as well, about how to really take care of your money. You know, especially with entrepreneurs, you know, we're, yeah. <laughs> you can't always just 
you know, ball out of control. You know, you, you have to be fi financially savvy. You have to be mindful of how you're spending. That's just anybody, of course. And these are principles yeah. that really teach you how to really handle money the proper way. And I just, my fourth book, uh, Cash for the Crown, is another patentry book that I just launched uh, a couple of days ago that really teaches uh, women and girls innovative ways to pay for the pageant expenses. Because I see a lot of times, a lot of girls and women that will pretty much go into debt to compete because pageantry is a very expensive hobby. Yeah. There's a right way to do it. It's the right way to do it. You know, you don't, my thing is, you know, everybody's entitled to what they want to do with their money, but let's be smarter about it instead of just putting everything yep. on a credit card and letting it ride. So I yeah. think a lot of times people, you know, I, I look at things from an out of the box way of, you know, there's other ways of making money than just your traditional, you know, let's get a second job or yeah, work extra absolutely. hours at the main job. So I give them innovative ways yeah. to make money that will not only, you know, be fun in the process, but also it will put a strain on their bank account. So that was for them. And then I actually have another book that I, that's not out available. It's called Intangible Crowns, um, uh, Effective Qu Quality, uh, effective qualities for the effective rain is for women and girls who are really trying to live out their God-given purpose and just kind of gives them some tools mm -hmm. to do that. Very cool. So you are obviously an avid writer. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. you're an avid reader. And, and so I why am. has... Awesome. Okay. So how has like writing these books, how has that helped with your business? How has that helped build your brand? Just so for people who are maybe thinking about they want to write a book. I mean, I hear that as really good advice. How has it affected you in your business and your journey being such a proficient, like a, a proficient and, uh, you know, a, like a real lover of writing? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, one thing about writing a book, it it uh, puts you in the position of an expert in your field. So I write a lot of books on pageantry. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have a blog, which I didn't mention. is crystalclearpageantry.com. And pretty much everything on that blog is pageantry related, whether we're talking about interview, whether we're talking about developing self-confidence. I interview title holders. And that's just a really good resource for anyone who is new or have been in the industry for a while. And one of the things that has really helped me with that blog is I was able to get um, – sponsorships through my blog to uh, write for other mm. companies and they actually paid me to write content so that has opened the door the blog has opened the door to really get some paid content opportunities cool. as well and also you know having the opportunity to interview miss america which was a really big for me um because she's you no know, that's a you know she's like a patch of celebrity so that was a, a great opportunity yeah. that i got recently and just um, a lot of, now that I'm writing books, a lot of national systems have reached out to me, wanted me to, you know, be a sponsor or wanted me to come talk to their girls or judge judge their pageants. Mm. Um, so that's really opened the doors as well. The fact that I am a writer and they see, because I promote a lot on social media, so they're finding me that way. And so it's opened the doors for me to really kind of be involved in other systems as well. Wonderful. And when it comes to the writing process, how ha do you handle the be beginning and end stage? And do you also consult on how to write a book or how to get your book out as well? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, for my first book, uh, I took a different approach because it's my fir very first book and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so what I did was I actually, you know, wrote the book and then I found a, a lady that she's got, she had a book design company and she was able mm -hmm. to edit, design the book from the inside out. She designed the cover and she actually got it ready for printing. So she did pretty much everything for me. But then once that book was done, I was able to kind of see what she did and I was able to do it on my own for the, the second, third, uh -huh. and fourth book. So I kind of... <laughs> And uh, okay. so one of the things, so now I know exactly what you need to do. One thing I, I will say that I do contract out. I'm, I can edit my yeah. own books, but I choose to because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm a good editor, but there are a lot of things that I do miss in the process. So I do contract that out. You know, I do hire an editor. I do actually hire a graphic designer. I find, the, I find those um, online via Fiverr, Upwork, you know, those type of platforms. Yeah. So I can do it that way. And I also, you know, once that's done, I can actually upload it to Amazon and go from there. So that's pretty much a very easy process for me. Now that I know okay. how she did, I kind of just mimic how she did it. Smart. Okay. So you followed the self-publishing route then, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very, very cool. All right. So you do so much. Uh, I'd love for you now to then, I guess, talk about what are some of the key successful things that you do to manage, you know, work time and downtime, because it sounds obviously that you're a very productive person, but everyone needs downtime, rest time. Absolutely. What are some of the things that you do for like self-care and to make sure that you recharge and you stay motivated to keep going? Absolutely. What Some of the things I do, I started meditating. 
And I do morning mm -hmm. meditations in the very morning. Right when I wake up, I have a morning meditation on my phone. It's an app called Breathe. So I wake mm -hmm. up to a morning meditation. I also, I, I read my scriptures. I do my journaling. Mm -hmm. I read a devotional when I have time. And in between that, sometimes I actually, I'm, a, I'm an avid runner as well. So running really helps wow. me to you know, get rid of the stress and kind of just have my me time. So I will go to the park and maybe run two, three miles. Try to do that nice. at least twice a week. Wow. Um, and also, I just, and then of course, you know, when you're, it's easy as an entrepreneur that you can sometimes work for hours and hours <laughs> without taking breaks. But sometimes I have to do what is called block scheduling, where I have to schedule my breaks. So mm. I may work for maybe three or four okay. hours and I take a break for like maybe 30 minutes or an hour. And I may just either read a book, get on YouTube, do something that is not work related. Love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an avid writer uh, and reader, who would you say are some of the authors that you love to read? What are some of the books that you like to take in? Let's see. What am I reading now? <laughs> um, I will say this. One of my favorite books that I like to read, and I've read it several times, but I will pick it up every now and then to give a recharge, is it's, it's by an author that wrote books in the, in the 1920s. Her name is Florence Scovel Sheen. She wrote The Game of Life and How to Play It. And she's oh, wow. written a several books. She's written that book. She's wrote Your wow. Word is Your One. She's really big mm. on success and manifestation and really having a positive mindset because what people fail to realize you know you, you are what you think and mm. whatever you, yeah whatever you think it becomes a true manifestation of your reality and that's something I had to learn yes. the hard way <laughs> based on my mm. negative thinking early on <laughs> and I, thinking I, thinking I hear you <laughs> at my moments when I'm negative I'm just gonna be honest I'm not perfect but yeah she yeah. really reminds me that you know you are what you think so if you're always thinking negatively then negative mm. will always come back so that's one thing I, I love reading her books she's like I said like I said she's an author that wrote in the 1920s I like reading books by um Napoleon Hill is a good author I like reading um yeah e um, I'm a big Iyanla fan Iyanla Van Sant I, I like reading her books yes. as well I'm really big into yes. the self-help space that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at right now, and I like reading books about personal finance as well. Dave Ramsey is really one of my favorite authors. Robert yes. Kiyosaki is another of my yes. favorite authors. Susie Orman. Yeah. So I'm more of like personal finance, self help kind of girl when it comes. Okay, to Okay, I love it. I just want to confirm. Uh, so uh, Felicia wanted to know, and it, so it's Florence Scovel Shin, right? Yes, mm -hmm. she wrote the okay. Game of Life and How to Play It, and she's written several Very books, nice. but. Um, but that's one of her, her flagship books. She's wrote another one called Your Word is Your Wand. Pretty much she's saying whatever you speak, that's what happens. You have to be careful, you know, choose your words wisely. You know, because mm -hmm. you know, our, words, our words can create and our words can destroy, so. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So have you uh, heard of uh, Dan Norris, the creator hate, or no? I haven't. I need to look that up. That's a really good, yeah, I think you'd really enjoy that book. Dan Norris, Creator Hate. It's on uh, Amazon. I'll put it here in the links here as well. And then okay. also, so I'm assuming that, then you're a fan of The Secret and The Law of Attraction yes. and all of that good stuff. Yeah, I forgot. Ronda Bird, the Secret, yes. <laughs> law, yeah. I'm really big on Law of Attraction. Mm-hmm. Okay, very, very good. Awesome. All right. Well, then with that, I'd love to transition to talk a little bit about the Sisters on Fire kind of institution, right? So this really is a platform that started as a play. Originally, it was called Diary of a Mad Black Feminist by Marsha <laughs> McNair and Anissa Moore. Uh, they're both professors here in New York and Long Island. And then, you know, that was about over 10 years ago, and it's been revamped as Sisters on Fire. And they've had, we've just had sold out productions at the East Village Playhouse in the city. And what I I did is I wanted to start an online conversation and I said you know we're the whole play is about talking about the black woman narrative in America which is mm -hmm. a very complex a very deeply moving conversation right because there's a lot of beauty and glory as being a black woman but there's also a lot of horror mm -hmm. and pain and suffering <laughs> and so mm -hmm. you know there are real sisters on fire in real life thus why we're speaking to be able to highlight women like yourself who are just amazing and and are living in their truth are unapologetic about who they are and what they do and are trying to spread positivity because this world needs more, right? Like if there was a million of you, there would be, it would be a different world, right? Like, so it, it, it's, it's a much needed platform. And so I'd love for you to talk a little bit about when you hear the word sisters on fire, what does that mean to you? 
Honestly, you hit the nail on the head. The first thing that came to mind was someone who was unapologetic and their true authentic self. Mm -hmm. um, and and okay. when I say unapologetic, you have to really be comfortable with who you are. And yes. regardless of what people may think, how they feel, because at the end of the day, you have to be your true authentic self. So I would say a sister on fire, someone who is unapologetic and, and who walks in her truth and who, who is her authentic self. Okay, perfect. So now in your life, whether it's personal or professional or aspirational, who were Sisters on Fire for you? I would say my godmother, Tawana uh, Neely, mm -hmm. my mother, Sandra Bell. Um, they've just really nice. been some amazing women because they do live in their truth. Um, and they've taught, mm -hmm. they've tried to teach me to live in my truth as well. Um, and they you know, of course, my mother, she's really, she's been a, a major impact on me and really raising me into the woman that I am today. And I've learned a lot from her. Um, who else would I say? I would say one of my, my uh, good friends, her name is Anita. She's really kind of taught me how to really be my authentic self and really to just, because um, she always gets on to me. She said, Crystal, you're so hard on yourself, <laughs> which I am. <laughs> and yeah. just really, you know, be, being okay with who I am and, and knowing that mm -hmm. I the person I am, I am enough, you know, and just really owning that mm -hmm. as well. Yes, absolutely. And yes, and I and I think, you know, it's hard because I think you sound like a very ambitious person, right? And I like, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, am. Would, I would, I would describe myself as that as well. And a lot of the women in this series, yeah, like when you want a lot, it means you, you're going to be like a kind of no nonsense person when it comes to yourself. And like, and you know, you want to just keep achieving, but you have to, you have to celebrate every victory, right? Waking up is a blessing mm -hmm. and a victory in and of itself. Absolutely. Being able to care for your health, that is a victory, right? And so it's important to, yes, mm -hmm. celebrate yourself because sometimes the world won't do it and you can't seek that affirmation from anyone else other than you. So it's important to Absolutely. yeah to, to know you're amazing and that you're really great and I guess just my last question before you share kind of how people can get in touch with you any announcements mm -hmm. you have is you know I guess what would be one thing that you if you could go back and like talk to yourself when maybe you weren't as confident or maybe you weren't mm -hmm. as uh, secure in who you are what would you say to her it's funny because I write this in my journal every day now I would tell her you are enough and that mm. was one thing that I didn't yes. believe about myself, that I thought I had to be somebody else. I thought I had to to have longer hair or lighter skin or, mm. you know, just yeah. those type, you know, even, you know, the carnal things, you know, things that really don't matter. And I just wish I yeah. would have told myself early on that, you know, I was, a, I was enough by myself. I didn't need anything else. And that's, a, that's something I even tell myself even now at 34, Crystal, you are enough. You know, you are enough yeah. just the way you are. So. That would be the advice Absolutely. I would give. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I think about that question as well. And because it's hurt, it hurts, right? It hurts when, you know, growing up in this country, when you don't see yourself, then you question everything about yourself, right? When you don't see women of all shades, then you, and you only see one type, then you say, okay, is that one type of the, you know, there's different mm -hmm. archetypes of beauty and it's, it's really challenging and children need to see themselves to, to feel validated until they can learn Absolutely. the hidden secret of, you know, you don't need any anything but you right like confidence comes from within mm -hmm. but it, but it's it's a journey it takes time to get there oh, yeah, and I, I guess I would say as well for myself, uh, what I would have told me at like 13 would have been, you know, difference is beauty. So much of our society mm -hmm. tries to make you fit <laughs> into something else, yeah, but that. that's right. That's not, that's actually not, if you look at the most successful people, it's what was different. It was about what was mm -hmm. weird and quirky that made them the success that they are. So I would say, you know, embrace your weirdness, your quirkness and, and, and monetize that shit, like monetize the hell out of it. <laughs> <Absolutely. because laughs> That's, you know, and, and also run, go towards your passion. So many parents make the mistake of saying, no, you can't be an artist or no, you can't, you know, and it's like, no limitations exist in our mind and, and they become a reality because we made them a reality in our mind first. And so, you know, follow your passion and your passion can make money and, and you're a living Absolutely. testimony of that. Yeah. Right. So I, I salute you for, for everything that you're doing. So how can Thank people you. champion you if, if Absolutely. If they want to work with you, if they want to learn more about you, I shared the link to your website. I shared the link to your books in the comments. How else can they get in touch with you? Well, like like you said, you shared the link. Uh, my blog is crystalclearpageantry.com. Um, you can find me there. Um, also, 
you can follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Um, let me let me just get my links together. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at I am Crystal Bell, and I'm okay. on Facebook at Crystal Clear Pageantry. So you can follow Perfect. me there. Um, you can send me a private DM, a private message. You can find send me a message on my blog, and I will get back with you. And also, my books are available on Amazon.com. So if you want to go to Amazon.com for slash author for slash Crystal Bell Salisbury, you can find the yeah. books. But if that's too much, just go to crystalclearpageantry.com, and there's a link there as well. Absolutely. And Felicia, she wrote such a beautiful comment. I'm so thankful I logged into social media. Hashtag I am enough. You guys were so inspirational to me. Thank Aww. you, Felicia. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. You. Listen, it's you are enough. You are more than enough. And every one of us matter. Everyone's voice matters. And your story matters. And I, what I encourage people is to think about their life as a book right? We all, whether we write a book and publish it or not, your life, your story is a book. And so you want to make sure that you are a hundred percent okay and happy with every chapter, every page, how it begins, how it ends. It's your book. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta master that and own that. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, and if anyone has any questions for Crystal, please put that in now. Otherwise we'll wrap this up. Uh, do you have any announcement, any events or things that you're doing, Crystal, that you'd like to share with, with the Sisters on Fire audience? What was that last thing you said? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Do you, yeah, do you have any events or any upcoming things that people should be on the lookout for? Um, Not up upcoming, but I will say this recently about last week, I lost, for anyone who's interested in the pageantry industry, want to learn more, I created yeah. a, a free email course called Seven Days of the Crown. And mm -hmm. if you want to get access to that course, just go to my blog, www.crystalclearpageantry.com and sign up for the email list and you'll get a series of seven emails that will give you content on the course and give you homework assignments to really get you really, you know, really some thorough knowledge about the industry. Also, like right. I said, I launched my um, ebook, Cash for the Crown. You go on my website as well. Get, get on the email list. You'll get that as a PDF as well. That's pretty much what I got going on so far. I'm, I'm planning on launching an online kind of pageantry academy in the next couple of months. So Very just be cool. on the lookout for that. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Well, again, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Everyone who wants to work with Crystal, please check out the website, check out her books. She's amazing. And just thank you for everything. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night, everyone. And stay tuned for the next Sisters on Fire IRL series episode that's coming up. All righty. Bye. All right. Bye.